with Martin Bester. We've got Tabitha Hume on the show. She is a clinical dietitian. We're talking about children's relationship with food, uh, adolescents' relationship with food. We've covered things like social media. Now, these days, you see and hear so much more. I cannot imagine the pressure on children. Just from social media, mm-hmm. advertising, marketing. We spoke about the language that adults use in front of children when it comes to describing food. And how we demonize food in your in your words, how we go from one extreme to the next. We spoke about snacking. Oh, uh, I am being taken out by that. Martin, good morning. Yeah, I had a little chuckle at your statement. Kids at five are not that fussy. I would love to invite you over to my house, but my six-year-old has a very, very specific palate. He is the most fussiest person under the sun. He refuses to eat any vegetables, anything healthy. He eats with the eyes. If it doesn't look nice, he won't eat it. And it's not for lack of trying on our side. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> we are at our wit's end with this child. I completely disagree. You've just described every five-year-old. Ever. I so, did not have a natural interest in the healthy stuff as a five-year-old. My parents, however, were very strict about stuff like that. Yeah, like I, I hear you, but yeah. I've I've also seen when children have turned their heads at um, vegetables. You can try as a parent, and it becomes a bit more of a long-term solution. You can't just tell the child eat your vegetables and then it's done. You also have to take a long-term. Well, he's giving his game away. Mm-hmm. You just spoke yeah. about it on the radio, and the mm-hmm. child was probably listening, going, "I won this one." <laughs> <laughs> can I just also say that we need to also take into account that sometimes that's also a sign of neurodivergence because some children it's literally yeah. textures that they actually cannot process and mouthfeel so, and mouthfeel that's what mm-hmm. I mean by texture so we can't mm-hmm. just assume oh you're just being a fussy five year old there might be a neurodivergence thing here as well so we're definitely going to talk about the extremes yes we're talking now about the average child okay uh, uh, average development at five mm. right. average development at five uh, it's like putting a safety belt on unfortunately and yes I do deal with um, parents coming in saying this child is so fussy and there it comes out I don't do this I don't do that I don't do the other at the end of the day um, if your child said I don't put my safety belt on you, you, you just I remember I sat yeah. in the car for yeah. half an hour until the child eventually put their safety mm. belt on mm. it's, it's, it's a no brainer It you say to the child okay you're allowed allowed to choose five vegetables. Which ones do you want? I don't want any. Well, sorry, we're going to sit here forever until you decide which five you're allowed. So, or which five you want. It's a non-negotiable. The human body simply cannot work or operate normally without those mm. components of a nutritious it's diet. a fantastic example and mm. metaphor. Mm. Uh, no, much. Oh no, he does. It gets a bit claustrophobic. We're mm. going to be driving without a safety belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Sorry. It? Well, then let's not drive. You are the actual mm. adult in the room yeah. that's got to make these uncovered. Mm. Okay, listen. Questions. <laughs> questions <laughs> for Tabitha. Hi, Julia here from Centurion. I would like to know. My son likes to eat his food very slowly. Is it bad to force him to eat his food more quickly? Okay. How slowly uh, can you eat? Yeah, eating slowly is good. Uh, there are a couple of red flags that come up. Um, a person that eats unbelievably slowly, it can be, and I repeat, it can be a sign of an ensuing eating disorder. But what's most important is to say, look, my boy or my you know, my girl, we uh, sit down and we eat, and it usually is half an hour to forty-five minutes that we eat. Please, none of this nonsense. Speed it up a little bit. Let's just, you know, fit in or. <clears throat> Uh, so, in essence, yeah, they should fit in with the family norm. Uh, eating fast is bad, uh, but eating in the middle is good. Just eat the same as your folks. Is there That's- a time frame? An accepted time frame? No, I don't think we can say there's a time frame. I mean, the Italians take an hour and a half to eat a five-course meal. Um, The Americans take about four and a half seconds to eat a full bowl of spaghetti (laughs) bolognese. So there are the two extremes. But I would say that if the family is used to eating over a period of half an hour, 45 minutes, the kid must comply. But if somebody is is sort of scooting their food around and, and using teaspoons to eat and trying to eat as slowly as possible, that is eating disorder behavior. So it might... Ah. Might cont- you know, we might look at other Cons- things. Consult with a professional? Correct. Okay, next one. How do you see the start of a eating disorder within children? Because my question is that we have a son, he's six years old, and he doesn't eat anything. Not 
by being picky, but he's just never hungry. And I feel he is the tiniest person. I feel that he should have a little bit more fat, look more like a little child. He's just never hungry. You can give him anything. He'll take about four bites and he'll leave the rest. Mm, um, okay. <sighs> That's a very loaded question because I'd have to assess the child first to see if there is a problem. Um, but essentially, yeah, a child should be hungry. A child should be active. A child should consume sufficient calories. If he's not, I would say it's not a bad idea to try and find out if there is an issue, whether it's a thyroid problem, whether it's an anxiety problem or alternatively to see whether he is avoiding. The other thing that I've seen quite a lot is the child avoids, avoids, avoids. And what you don't realize is he's going to the kitchen and grabbing an entire packet of biscuits, um, which is, you know, you don't, you're not really aware. And then the parent does the other side and says, well, actually, as long as the kid's eating something, I'm happy. And then we get this development of, I'll only eat foods that are really, really delicious. Well, it's like saying, "I, I will only play computer games all I'm never going to go to school So not, sometimes um, you put your foot down When they mm. say they're not hungry for this yeah. They're hungry for something else Well absolutely yeah, <laughs> This me. food's boring Well <laughs> yes it might be <laughs> Alright last question I have a two and a bit year old And she eats really well at school Vegetables and everything She used to eat really well at home too But lately she only wants bland food at home plain rice, plain macaroni, stuff like that. And I just want to find out if it's just a phase I shouldn't be too worried about. Uh, I don't know. Again, I'd have to assess properly. But on the outside, my guess would be that the school is a little bit more firm. And also the school is having a look at, well, she's looking at everyone else eating, so it's fine. If she's sitting eating on her own and not eating with a family, she may want to emulate what you're eating. So perhaps eat together and show what a healthy mix of food is. But uh, there are so many things that contribute to disordered eating. Mm. Um But just going back, if I may, how to isolate whether somebody's got an eating disorder as a child. If they are very preoccupied with food, either the eating of it or the avoidance of it, then you may have a problem. If the child is consistently talking about food, what's healthy, what's not, what is this good for me, is that not good for me, is this bad for me, etc. Um, if the child is using words of, of negativity against their bodies, mm. um, that is a very big deal. I had yeah. a friend coming to me saying, mum, I'm, uh, well, uh, her son said, mum, uh, I'm, I'm feeling good, but my tummy's quite fat mm. and this kid's perfectly normal. That, that That's that's cause for alarm. What's going on there? Um, and to Felicity's point, uh, when it comes to the extremes and the disorders which is what we're touching on uh, as a parent you have this tough task in life and it doesn't just it's not just with eating it's with everything in life Mm. Uh, mental you know psychological is to know when it is okay and part of the course Mm -hmm. and when it is verging on abnormal Mm. yeah and that's That's, the difficult part part. what what is the answer reading more Consulting more, asking more questions with other parents. No. Like my child is going through this. Is that what you're going through? Yeah. Or what? No. To me, asking a professional. Okay. Asking a professional. What is what is a healthy attitude towards food? Um, okay. Yeah, no, the, I, I think asking other parents is quite difficult because mm. this mom is on the banting. The other one is on a carb free. The other one is terrified of gluten. And um, then the parents <laughs> sitting there saying, my goodness, which one am I going to go for? So, no, yeah. I would say, unfortunately, very few people, if you're looking at the percentages of it, actually consult with a registered dietitian. They are listening to influencers who say, this is what I eat in a day. And then she looks great with these massive boobs and a tiny waste so they think oh i must eat like that Mm. they don't understand that nutrition is a lot more than just uh what you look like um i just wanted to also say with having this conversation i think the one thing that parents also need to remember very like a lot is that eating disorders is not prevalent necessarily in girls only yes and social media has also 
are showing very young boys that if you don't have this perfect mm. triangular six body pack. with a six pack at the age of 11 mm. sure. and huge shoulders, then you aren't really a boy and you aren't really handsome. And these boys mm. are also, you know, now it's that kind of the, the gymming, but the eating as well that comes that mm. this audit eating to get to look like that. Yes. So it's not just... Is mm-hmm. it fair in closing to say that those those early, very important formative years, mm. it's very important for any parent to have some kind of connection mm. with a dietitian or someone who knows about nutrition and, and, and dieting? I can't remember. Did we have that in primary school? Was there a school dietitian? No, or, but or was you learned it in domestic or, science. You, you, uh, they still do though? No. You take what? domestic science as an option. Um, unfortunately, there is very little to do with standard healthy normal nutrition at school. Listen. There was even a biology teacher yes. of, a, of a grade 8 um, girl who came to me and she said, my biology teacher told me, it's easy to eat healthily. All you do is cut carbs. And that is a teacher and that goes when in forever. When did this change? Wow. I'm beginning to understand why <sighs> certain adults, mm. I, I listen to some people and I think to myself, what happened mm. in, 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 in your in your standard seven, your grade nine year? Yeah. It, like no reading whatsoever because the questions are very, very rudimental. Mm. It's the kind of stuff. So when did this all change, the syllabus, that, you, that it's an option? I actually don't know when the school syllabus changed, oh. to be honest oh. with anyway, you. But I know yeah. everyone laughs at domestic science, but it's actually got a, uh, quite a lot of importance uh, to it. <laughs> you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, we've run out of yeah. time. We could sit here for hours and hours mm. because it is an all-important topic. Uh, mm. I, I, I also, I actually want to say come back again if you don't mind at some point. I would point. love that. I would we love that because it's a minefield. It's a minefield and we're mm. only scratching the surface, mm. I think. Yeah. I think we've, we've, we've been yeah. talking a lot about uh, the usual kind of stuff, mm. you know, we should also be talking a whole lot more about the extremes mm-hmm. and we're going to leave that for next time fabulous <laughs> Tabitha, thank you for coming Super, in thank you i'm glad we're actually putting this out there because it is a problem thank we you well have done to talk about it mm. and we'll talk about it some more this is breakfast with Madden bester jacaranda fm